Memphis, Tennessee, in Midtown. From the Garner Shop, it's Garner TV with your host, Billups Allen. Hey, how's it going out there? Uh, we're back, as they said, back here in the store for another edition of Garner Television, the first one of the year. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on with COVID here and there, so we want to see, you know, that we can keep doing this and bringing you some crazy videos from in and around Memphis, along with some footage of bands and the kinds of things we enjoy bringing to you during the height of COVID and may again have to do because we just don't know how COVID is going to go. Uh, so we're trying it again from the store and maybe we'll get back to doing another big live show uh, later in the year. Uh, really winging it tonight. Night, but we got some good stuff to show you so if you got us on and you're drinking and having a good time tonight uh that's a good thing you know just enjoy us and think about us being here and we just got video footage to show you for most of the night i got our friend jb do you want to swing in and say hello there's jb he's hanging out tonight and uh we're just gonna try to have fun with all this and you said that so you said the next thing coming up is cobra man the first What's the Cobra Man thing you said to introduce? Oh, that was just our intro. That was intro. Oh, that was Cobra Man. So we're going next to Goner Fest footage, right? Yes, it's Nick Allison. Nick Allison, right. I got it right here. So, yeah, we're going to do some Goner Fest footage. We've got another in the series of the Alien Sex Talk videos, if you remember that one from the last issue. And uh, let's just get going. Nick Allison's coming up right now from Goner Fest. You're watching Goner TV. Stay with us. We'll be here with you for a while. Good enough, right? I'm sorry, when you said Cobra Man, I thought maybe that was supposed to, though. We're doing Cobra Man? That was Cobra Man, okay. That song is called Jump On In because the water is fine. It's fine, like, no, this is
can never be simple. <laughs> we try and do it the simplest, <laughs> stupidest way. Oh, no, they can hear us all too, so that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah.
call in today. And you'll be greeted by our friendly and professional receptionist, Madam Stardust. that just joined us due to some technical difficulties you were brought in during the alien sex talk video so that shouldn't have been confusing at all to you but uh we had one of those last time that was a lot of fun i hope you got something out of it uh i know i did and uh before that we had goner fest footage we had raining sound and nick allison we're gonna have a lot more goner fest footage coming up for you and we're also gonna have uh we got a miss pussycat video coming up um I wanted to do another segment tonight, and uh, I did a little intro thing for it. This is going to be the stripped down Billup sees a movie video. Uh, you may remember I used to do it with a group of people who would act out the movie scenes. Um, we didn't do that this time, but uh, I just thought I would tell you about a movie I liked to kill some time. Uh, and I, so I've been interested, I don't know if JB, I don't know if you've seen all the hype behind this movie, Don't Look Up. Have you heard about this movie? Is this the movie with uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? I think so. Yeah, and it's Jennifer a Lawrence. Narrative, right? It's so. about the global warming parallel thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I brought I brought up my own uh, my own one of my own favorite end of the world movies. It's called Miracle Mile. Um, it's from 1988, and uh, it's a story of Harry Washello, who's played very competently by Anthony Edwards. Uh, Harry is going on a late night date with uh, his, his friend Mayor Julie Peters when he goes to pick her up. Uh, he picks up a telephone, and when he picks up the telephone to answer it, uh, there's a soldier on the other line, and he's panicking, and he said the bomb is on its way. So, bomb. Oh, the bomb. Bomb. So, like, a bomb is going to blow up, right? So, he goes into this diner and tells these people he's seen this, and it, it leads into a big discussion about whether or not Russia could actually be bombed. This is 1988 during the, you know, nuclear you know, paranoia. You, you remember there was a lot of nuclear paranoia back in the day, right? Yeah. Like, uh... Um, the morning after, the weeds one of Yeah, yeah. The morning, yeah. The day after. Yeah, the day after. The yeah. day after was another one. I remember, yeah, there's a lot of those. So Harry has to figure out if this is a real movie or a joke. He can't decide. And uh, for the rest of the movie, these people are trying to get out of L.A. before this bomb that they do or don't know is going to drop drops. It's a really interesting movie. I think, uh, you know, if you're into end of the world narratives, you might enjoy it. It was directed by Steve Jarnett, who did Cherry 2000. You might know this cult film. And Jared, Steve Jarnett is also credited... 
as being one of the writers on Strange Brew, the Bob and Doug McKenzie movie. And if you know that movie, you know a lot of writing hey. went into that. That's a great movie, yeah. Hey. Yeah, 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 right, exactly. Hoser. Um, so I feel like this is a nice time capsule for nuclear hysterical hysteria. And uh, some of you may remember ducking under your desks. Uh, for uh, hey, if there's a school, hey, if there's a bomb threat right now, I'm under the desk. I'm getting under here. Well, this safe. would do anything if a yeah. bomb blew up, right? So if you enjoyed, uh, don't look up, which I haven't seen yet. So I don't know if you enjoyed it. You it's might look at the Miracle Mile. It's a long movie. Yeah, don't look up. It's a long movie. It's long. It's long. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't know that. Uh, it's a it's a comedy. Is what I've heard, but uh, you know, it is. It's funny. I guess I don't remember. Did you I see watched, it? I miss. I miss. I, I don't remember. I watched it on Christmas Day or the day Did after, you? and I was kind of like in and out. And I was like, man, this is long. Yeah, that was all you got out of it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, if it's too long for you, check out Min- Min- Miracle Mile comes in at a tight 88 minutes, actually. I like that kind of economy. Yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't even make the 90-minute mark. So right, you, you might go. check that out. And Anthony Edwards is easily one of my favorite Bat- Brat Packers. You know, it, it the, the mayor is not Mayor Winningham. You're talking about the Brad. No, Mayor was her name. Julie Peter. Julie that's the Peter's character's that, okay. name. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. It really is. Actually, the movie is kind of a compelling look at the actual Miracle Mile in L.A. in the '80s. And meanwhile, there's nuclear drama going on. Right. You know? So I think I think if you are maybe pop down to Black Lodge, rent it. It's out on Blu-ray now, which what? is another reason I thought of it. You you mentioned the day after though. The day that's after. The day after. I don't know why this is so funny to me, but the day after ends with Jason Robarts holding an onion, and it's supposed to be very dramatic, but I, I think that's hilarious. The day after, the day the day after was like a long televisual event. They scared me. It's, it's, when I was yeah. in school, they were like, "This is going to scare you." I yeah. Think, maybe my mom was like, "You can't watch this." And the other funny thing about that movie is Steve Gutenberg hitchhikes through most of the movie, and it's not a comedy. This is before he became a cop. I guess. I think it was before Police Academy. Uh, Joe Beth Williams was in it too. I don't know if that matters, but she was in Poltergeist. But she but it on, that's right. That's but it ends with Jason Robart standing amongst a bunch of people holding an onion, and he knows he's going to die. Um, I think it's hilarious. It was supposed to be dramatic, but it was really quite a funny scene. So, you know what? I happen to know that Black Lodge has the day after as well. Yeah. So, you could get either of these videos, rent them, bring them home. I'm trying to remember. I said weeds, but that's a different thing. There's a British ver- the kind of yeah. the British version of the day after. But I think it's called maybe Threads. Is that maybe. it? Maybe. I don't Weeds, I think, was the, the marijuana show. On TV, yeah, yeah with the, but thre- I think is, is, is Threads the British. Uh, like, I, I don't know that one. If it is, I'm interested. That one, that one is ends. that it. We've got a thumbs up that that's correct. That one ends. That one ends messed up. That's no Jason Ro- Robards holding an onion. I don't yeah, want to yeah. bum people out on a Friday night, but there's there's somebody holding something, and it's not him, and it's not an onion. Well, oh, man, I don't know. So it's Threads. We'll see. I'm interested now. I gotta I gotta see this. Anyway, that was my little thing. If you want to read my full review of Miracle Mile, I'm starting a little thing you can look at off the marquee.com That's, hey and while we're here and we're plugging this i would definitely recommend this and i cleared this with billups before uh, i did this but billups uh was selling some zines and a book at a zine fair uh, a few months ago and i bought a copy of his book the league and i want to plug this right now because i thoroughly enjoyed it i finally uh, just read this here in the past couple weeks, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, they sell it here at the shop. I imagine it's up on the website, and you can also probably buy it directly from Billups. But this is a great book and a great read, and uh, I wanted to recommend this. Also, it, there's something about this book uh, that is like unlike any other book that I've ever read, and it definitely affected my pacing in a positive way, and there's no page numbers in it. Which is fascinating. So I don't know if that was intentional when it got published or printed, but I love that aspect of it. But uh, it's I'm, a great book. Thank I'm going to say that was not an accident. Good. Thank you. <laughs> well, I like either way. I like it. So <laughs> yeah. I do want to encourage you all right now, if you get a chance to read uh, The League by Bill of Salad. That's nice of you. I owe you a dollar. Thank you. Um, okay. You know, I have written on the back of here, too, another movie to rent along with that. Just very quickly, I know we've gone over on this segment. It's Failsafe with Henry Fonda. That's another good so there's some more end of the world narratives for you to check out 
and I don't know why. I just want to, <laughs> just in case you wanted to. None of them are uh, that funny, though, unless you have a weird sense of humor. Um, all right, let's get back into these videos. We got the Archaeus and Human Eye coming up. You were there. You were present during these these performances. Yes, I was. Yeah, that was some electrifying performances. Violent shreds with Human Eye, I think. Got up there and did some shredding also. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to see a lot of that. And then the Miss Pussycat video follows that in the next set of videos. Thanks for hanging in with us. And uh, you're watching Goner Television.
a lot of fun. And you can make a puppet show out of things that are just laying around your house. Like these buildings are made out of simple cardboard boxes that are covered with shelf lining paper or fabric, burlap, marshmallows. You can even just draw on the cardboard with a marker or a crayon and um, make a whole world. It's lots of fun. I think making the world of a puppet show is my favorite part. I really like to make trees and buildings and puppet theaters. It's like having a secret clubhouse or your own little world. The pyramid in my puppet show, The History of Ancient Egypt, was also made out of cardboard. I just scored the edges and bent it and boom, it turned into the end and a pyramid. Now, for your puppets, there's lots of ways to make puppets. Mark Anthony is made out of cardboard with piano wire up at the top, but you could just use a coat hanger and straighten it out. Caesar is also made out of cardboard and just little bits of fabric that I've glued to him, and his lips are made out of felt. His eyes are made out of an eggshell carton, and that's when they kind of pop out. And his arms have springs in them, but that makes them wiggly. You can also make puppets out of things that you find in your backyard. Cleopatra's children are made out of pine cones with a little piece of wire attached. The cobra you might have noticed is actually a sock puppet and I just used one of my old socks and the teeth, this is one of my secrets, the teeth are cut out of an old Clorox bottle that I saved and you can glue it or sew through it. Here, I'll show you. See a Clorox bottle like this? It makes excellent fangs and it cuts pretty easily. Okay, these scissors are dull. You can add special effects on a stick, like this lightning bolt. Sometimes I like to make puppets out of seashells. You can also make puppets out of aluminum foil. I love aluminum foil. And this is Beowulf from a different puppet show called the Western Village Shopping Village. And Beowulf has a sword so she can kill the vampires. But she's just made out of cardboard and aluminum foil. It's very simple. The most important thing about a puppet show, or any show actually, is to have fun. I think Mardi Gras parades are a lot of fun. So sometimes I like to just do a puppet show Mardi Gras parade, like this one. You can try it at home. You can make little tiny floats out of shoe boxes or pieces of wood or pine cones or seashells. These are also boats for Cleopatra. Simple little noise maker, or maybe you've got a Casio keyboard or a guitar at home, but you can just use a bell or a party horn. Another one of my favorite things to do with puppets is to start a band. You can cut a guitar out of cardboard and then just roll up a piece of tape on the back and stick it to their bodies like this. And then, oh boy, Cleopatra started a band. Oh, and look, this guy came along. He's got an acoustic guitar. What?
kind of music does your band play? <laughs> Wasn't that, wasn't that fun? <laughs> Where are, we, are we live? I see. Okay. Well, that was fun then. I was paying attention, of course, because that's how that works. Uh, man, you just watched some Human Eye and Archaeus from Gonerfest, the last Gonerfest. Uh, how did you enjoy that? It's awesome. Yeah. The whole thing. I love Miss P's part. Yeah. I'm like. Oh, and the and the Miss. Yeah, the video was interesting. I yeah, feel like great. I could now put on my own puppet show. Uh huh. And RKs and Human Eye were ripping too. Yeah, yeah. That was good. That was a good time. Uh, I remember uh, being there for that and seeing it live. But watching it on video is quite Garner a different Fist? experience. Yeah, yeah I had a better angle here yeah. than I did there. <laughs> of course, sitting here watching it was was quite different. Uh, that, yeah, that's how that works. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I guess, what, what you got anything you want to say about Blast Garner Fest? No. No? Oh, I, oh the Garner Fest? Well, yeah, what, what about... I had a blast. What was your favorite moment of the last Garner Fest? Every time I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in a long time after being locked in my house for a year and a half. That's such a cop-out answer, man. Come on. No, that's... Never, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's can't say that. something nice. I was trying to get... No, I, no, I had fun, man. I saw a bunch of great music. Yeah, Dude, yeah. For real, though, after being in the house for that long mm-hmm. and all the, the emotional highs and lows of not knowing whether or not these guys were going to be able to pull it off. Not yeah, just yeah. guys, guys and gals, everybody. Yeah, yeah, all the y'alls. But it was fun. I had a great time. What was your favorite part? Um, probably when I I I'd introduced the last band. I was nervous about introducing bands, so probably when that part of the show was over for me. You were that your high point was when you were done doing the dirty <laughs> done work. with the business. <laughs> And all I had to do that was ridiculous for the rest of the night was carry this stupid golf club around that I uh, did not get to use for comedic purposes. Were, were you, you were going to tee off on somebody? or what? I just... <laughs> I had this, well, it was dumb, and you know, the funny thing about that for me, and I'm, I'm making this confession right here, I, I don't think, I think I've mentioned this to you, but I carried that stupid thing around in a bag the whole time. Is it a putter? Is it, it, was, a it was, it was, it was, a, it had wood on it, it was a big wood. It oh, felt it was a like, driver? A driver. It An old like driver. A, it felt like a weapon. It was something that they had left. Arnold Palmer collection. I'm not a guy, I hate golf, first of all, just to be clear, I <laughs> hate everything putt-putt. about golf. Huh? I, I would putt putt, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but what, like hundreds of homeless people couldn't make houses on a putt putt court. You know what I mean? That's the they, they could on a golf course. You see what I'm saying? You get the connection there. Real, just real estate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Real. I don't like the real estate that golf takes up. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's a lot of real estate. But there was a leftover golf club that I had made a joke about, and I was and I carried it into Goner Fest. First of all, actually, the funny thing was a security guard uh, looked at me and looked away. Nobody asked me for a ticket. Nobody asked me why I was carrying a weapons grade stick with me. And nobody asked like how strange like I didn't I looked like this. I was dressed the whole night the whole No, none of <laughs> If you want <laughs> lots of weapons, no money at the door. If, if you want to get into Goner Fest for free, my advice wow. is just look like somebody that you don't want to question because they they did not look twice at me when I walked through there. You had on that get up. This is exactly how yeah, I might have been a different t shirt, but I had I had the cravat and the the sweat, the ja- the jacket and a bag with a huge golf club sticking out of it. A paper bag. And I, I oh, you had a I paper tented- bag with a golf club in it? I t- yeah, and I tentatively put it by the stage and I realized so much was going on I didn't want it to get in the way. So then I moved it. So then I was stuck with the damn thing all night. And then like well then I didn't even get to do all of the inner do like everything was kinda of going skewed back one way or the other. And I didn't get to do the golf club bit. And then I got to carry the damn thing around for the rest of the night. I should have just left it there, but I just felt guilty. I felt like somebody was going to grab it and hit somebody with it or something. So you know, it's a just pretty laid back crowd. A lot of yeah, but yeah, I did. Just it, I know I would get home and read in the news that somebody was beat to death at the golf club, <laughs> and I know I was the Your one. Your fingerprints that put it were there. all over uh, it. My finger, yeah, and my fingerprints were all over because I didn't think enough to cover it. But it was a really stupid reason that I had the thing in the first place. And well, uh, can, so, Bill, you, what you're saying is the highlight from Goner Fest for you was n- not getting. Uh, charged with murder. <laughs> yes. Or yeah, to pull yeah. off the bit with the golf club. 
Well, it was funny because a, a few people did look at it and say, have you got a golf club in that bag? But nobody ever asked me why or like what I was like. Is that yeah. a golf club or you get? Um, yeah, just, I was like, yeah, just, there's just a golf, just carrying a golf club around like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, but what was the bid? And Can we ask I, now? Or I'm, I'm fine with telling you what the bid is, but there's been so much buildup, and it's, it's not funny at all. It's not really funny at all. Okay. But it might have been funny at the time if I had got to pull it off. What it was was is I, I was just fooling around with scissors one night, and I, 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 I cut out this obscene-looking sort of hand, and it was like, and I put a rubber glove on it, right? And then I, I, I taped it to this golf club, and I just went to the kitchen to look for something weird, and I taped a potato masher to the golf club. And the joke was, I was going to say, you know, during Garner Fest, we're asking you to maintain social distancing, but that doesn't mean that you can't engage in some of your favorite Garner Fest activities, like doing hand stuff with strangers. <laughs> We just ask that you use this device <laughs> that I'm going to leave here on the stage. And that was my plan to leave it so people could examine it more. And, and you know, just bring it back when you're done. That way, you know, you don't, like, uh, spread COVID, you know. And, and the idea was the hand would be for, you know, certain genitalia and the potato masher would be for others. It, I did, well, it didn't make any sense. I wasn't trying to be rude. It just didn't make sense to look at it. And that was my big joke. And I never got to do it, but I did get to carry the fucking thing around for a very long time so that's the mystery of why i was carrying the golf golf club around uh, would you would you have thought that was funny if you had saw me do it that's a lot dude i'm processing <laughs> <laughs> well maybe well, we had a go. camera and i'm pretty like we had to go to another video right now i'm not but i'm hold up coming soon for pre-order yeah, but hold is, on, is so, bill's but, oh, but, rube goldberg <laughs> jerk off machine <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Alec. That was quick. Yeah, I know we got to process this, but you made a. You said it was kind of a. I just. How did you describe the hand? It was not dirty. You said it was obscene. The hand. It was just obscene. looked. It just looked gross because I just cut it out of sort of styrofoam and put a rubber glove on it. It just looked like something you didn't want to mess with. Like and if you saw it on the ground, you'd just been like, "Ugh, what would the, you know? Like, what would that have been used for?" And the potato masher was. And the potato masher was just like I was just trying to think of something else ridiculous to put on there. You know, like. And, and, like it just, some, and it just like looked sculpture. dumb. Like the whole thing, art. and the whole thing looked silly. And I thought, yes, this looks like something that that somebody might use to pleasure another person with. And then, you know, I don't like why. I don't know. Dude, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. You're like, fuck yeah. Anyway. I thought it was, I actually, after, like, I felt like, okay, if you really want to get into this, I thought, just because of the way, the, the opening, I wrote, like, five minutes of material for the opening, and, like, there was a little bit of juggling with the bands being late and all that, and I just thought, all of my fucking shit bombed at the beginning. I just felt like I had totally bombed, and I, my, my savior was, I thought the golf club thing was funny, and I didn't get to do it, and that was, I, wish, you, I, I wish you had, just if you hire me for an event that's all the effort i put into it like uh, is uh you know a silly device and so few jokes i love it i love it <laughs> anyway Conifest confessions that was that was i've been wait, i've been waiting to talk about that for a while but just it never got brought up again uh, are we going ready to move on <laughs> or is everybody just processing what i just said <laughs> I could just stand here for a minute and just, just let it sink. It's still sinking. Yeah, I've, it was kind of like the. It was just sort of like a Mister Show joke. You know what I mean? Like when they like show show you a weapon or, or like Futurama joke, where they show you some device and you're like, "What does that do?" You know? Like, yeah, that was the kind of humor I was going for there. It wasn't meant to be really obscene, but all right. So we got. Um, more Garner Fest footage coming up, man. Sweeping Promises. That was quite a set, wasn't it? Yeah. They're tearing it up. That was their year last year, wasn't it? Everybody heard of Sweeping Promises by the end of that year. And uh, we got Digital Leather. We got commercials um, ex and a premiere of, of Tucson's new X-Bats video. Another band that's having a pretty good year. Their album is... They were uh, great at Garner Fest, too. They were great at Garner Fest. Their album is been doing well here. Uh, people have been enjoying it. 
not just buying it but actually listening to it and uh so yeah that'll be the next thing coming up you're watching goner tv thanks for sticking with us
it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Donna. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is uh, Eric and uh, Zach from Goddard Records. Uh, we're here in Memphis, Tennessee. We're a record shop and a label, and we do a festival every year. Um, and we got a premiere uh, of a new video from a band for you here today. They're the expats from uh, outside of Tucson, Arizona. Excellent band. Uh, they played our festival, and we recently put out uh, their uh, latest LP. This is a video for Best Kiss. Check it out. I'm looking there. I got you. Well, no, that was great, wasn't it? I enjoyed that uh, mm -hmm. video very much, especially the dog. You know, you can show me a lot of stuff, but as soon as a dog gets in it, it elevates it. Or a cat. I like, I like dogs and cats in videos. I don't like babies in videos, though. You know, I just keep your babies out of your videos. <laughs> uh, before that, we had Digital Leather and Sweeping Promises uh, from Gonerfest. And again, you know, hate to keep, I feel like a broken record, but it was a great sets. Didn't you enjoy that? Absolutely. Yeah. Enjoyed it the first time when I was there in there. person and tonight watching, enjoyed watching reminiscing. It. And we're watching it here with our friends on, on, on uh, whatever the video, the, the internet things, and our friends here in the shop. Uh, the, the digital leather was great, don't you think? Yeah, it was great. I was just telling you my favorite line of, of the last few years is embrace a moron in your heart. I think that was a great line from uh, the digital leather group. Yeah, it's a good line. Yeah, you, you have a good line from uh, from any of your favorite bands lately. Any good, any good lyrics? Man, uh, I, I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah, question, I know. So. It's kind of that's a lot to spring on the um, old stoners. So I don't want to do that right there. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, I wouldn't know. I'm, you know, if it looked like that, I wouldn't have been able to hey. do that. I wouldn't have been able to answer it right out either, Dude, except I'm, for hey, I was man. thinking about it. Preach. Um, Preach. 
what were we saying though this is pretty much the end of the show right and that's we we got through it it was a little chaotic we're trying to learn how to do it again we're out of the lamplighter because of covid those of you who've been keeping up know that we did some big shows here at the lamplighter but we didn't want to let it go so we're going to see how this works you know maybe going back and forth see how we can manage uh but we're you know covid numbers are high in tennessee so we're staying safe and we hope you all are too uh, let's see we said we saw everything Thing, and this is going to be the end of the show. We'll do another one like this for you, or we'll be returning to the lamplighter, depending on what happens. Planning uh, on the lamplighter. We're planning on the lamplighter for next time in February. I'm, I, yeah, that's only my really my worry is the disease thing. That's all. And I don't get. I don't guess I ever mentioned that that video was the expats from Arizona who are also big Goner Fest players. Uh, then the last thing coming up, you said it doesn't say what that is, but you said it was. Jack Oblivion doing 18 and you said you've seen this before I, I didn't, didn't say either this. one of those things but I said I saw Jack Oblivion <laughs> performing the music of Alice Cooper with Abe White on vocals they were the spiders, right? yep dressed as I mean Abe was like in full Alice Cooper mode but they did the they didn't do the beheading they did the electrocution I think they wow. had an electric chair and they had him up there. It was at the Bayou. And if you've been to Memphis and been to the Bayou, they don't have shows in the Bayou. Wow. But they did this night. That's interesting. I yeah. don't know what the they, Bayou is. They did some shows for a while. They have an amazing band. There's Whittemore playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The band that night. Yeah. He had a great band playing with him. And uh, and Abe was Alice Cooper that night. So, yeah. It was it was something to see. It was great. So, I'm glad that we have footage of this, too. Yeah. That's, oh, cool. yeah. The, uh, an Alice Where was Cooper. this footage shot? This was Gunnerfest in the middle of Jack's set. Oh, in the middle of his set when he got... That's right. Okay, cool. cool. I didn't know that that happened. Uh, all right, well, thanks. I was there, but like you said, you know, old... <laughs> <laughs> You gotta apologize to him, Bill. For that. I didn't yeah. think that was that. Well, we we have we have friends, both acknowledged that we are old, old. Well, maybe the other part, but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but I couldn't answer. I can't. I'll tell you real quick, man. Like I, I I can't answer very basic questions sometimes when people ask me. Like I was a dog, right there with you. Yeah, like uh, I'm not. Now this is bad. If you think that that's bad. I, like I was a dog walker for like 20 years on and off like I went to co I didn't go to college I was a dog walker I went to college I get you know, going back to dog walking I, I was a dog walker for 20 25 years on and off and like you get in this zone when you're walking dogs all day where you don't talk to people all day and then somebody will walk up to you and speak to you and you'll be like you, it'll be like an alien just landed in front of you you know you just like you're just in a zone you don't know and people say oh what's your dog's name and it's not my dog and I, of course, I walk this dog every day for six months, but, it, but the name will just jump out of my head. You know, I'll just be like, Bleh, I'll blank, and then I'll feel bad, and I'll just lie. I'll just lie and go, Oh, it's Willie. <laughs> and then they'll see me later and go, How, How's Willie doing? I'll be like, I have no idea what you're talking about at all. <laughs> And and I was and I was not a dog walker that did drugs either. A lot of dog walkers do drugs. I don't know if you know that, but um, <laughs> I was not one of those. I, I kept it very straight because I felt like I was in charge of people's property. Yeah, yeah. Care of the dog. Yeah, because I care about animals quite a lot. Safe you know? to where you started the walk. Yeah, but but you know, I didn't have to be on drugs for my mind to empty. As soon as somebody asked me a simple question, so you know, I wasn't making fun of you. We're we're on this same page there. No, I, yeah. dude, I'm right there with you. I'm yeah. having fun. But I will apologize if you really feel like it make a difference. So I, think, I think we're okay, though. <laughs> All right, where were we? <laughs> it's the end of. Are we doing something here? I can't even remember. This is the end. Of, Jack and we're going to see Jack Peter Oblivion. Terrible. That's right. Alex, and Alex this is Cooper. the end of all. I said this. Alex Cooper. Alex Cooper, my favorite band, Alex Cooper, <laughs> and the Spiders. And uh, this has been fun. I hope we, you know, I hope we will see you again and uh, check back with us. We'll see. We'll let you know what's going on. Maybe we'll see you live next time. And this has been Goner Television. Thanks to JB and everybody Woo! and uh, everybody that's here. Alex, Sarah, and. And uh, what's his name over there? Eric. <laughs> Eric O. The, our, our captain, Eric O. over there. Good night. Hi, everybody. Where's hey, Abe? Abe. 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 Abe.